start our new tomb raiding adventure two months after rise of the tomb raider as laura croft and her trusty sidekick jonah have been fighting against the paramilitary group known as trinity they are dragging pedro dominguez head of trinity's high council to the mexican town of Cuzumel. laura investigates nearby tombs that are being examined by trinity and finds a mural indicating a hidden city the summoning of a mayan god and a series of cataclysms that will destroy everything because what would be the point of tomb raiding if there weren't hidden cities and gods to find? So anyway, 30 seconds after seeing the mural of a dagger on top of a box leading to tsunamis and earthquakes, Laura decides to pull the dagger out and do you guessed it, triggers a tsunami that completely destroys Kutumel. Diego later captures Laura and tells her that her actions have triggered the cleansing which will eventually lead to the death of the sun, a permanent solar eclipse. He takes the dagger from her. And like any bad guy worth their salt, intends to remake the world in his image once he finds the box. Jonah is unhappy with Lara's actions, but decides to still go along with her because she's fine as hell. I mean, uh, because he of their friendship. That's why, because of their friendship. Using their detective skills, they pursue Dominguez into South America, straight into the Amazon. The second cataclysm begins and a massive storm causes their plane to crash. Miraculously, they both survive the horrific crash and find their way into Paititi, the hidden city. While exploring the local tombs, they find out that the dagger and box belong to the goddesses Chakchel and Ixchel, and stabbing the box with the dagger will sacrifice the god Kukul Khan and stop the cleansing. Lara saves a boy named Etsli, and he just so happens to be the son of Unuratu, the queen of the city. Here we find out that Dominguez is actually Amaru, her brother-in-law and leader of the cult of Kukulkan. Amaru was taken by the Trinity as a child and was working with them since. Unuratu leads a rebellion against his influence in the city. Etsli is kidnapped by the cult and Lara and Unuratu work together to get him back and obtain the box. They successfully save the boy but Unuratu has been captured and Lara discovers that the box has been stolen. She also fights off humanoid type creatures who turn out to be the Yaxil, guardians of the box. Lara disguises herself as a cultist to infiltrate the temple where Unuratu is being held captive. She overhears Amaru telling Unuratu about Andres Lopez, a missionary who hid the box and was driven mad by the power. Lara finds a clue to the box's location and rescues Unuratu, but she is shot by Commander Rourke before they can escape. Unuratu warns Lara not to let the box influence her before she dies. As Lara and Jonah leave Paititi to find the box, they are attacked and separated. Rourke contacts Lara and tells her that he has killed Jonah. Lara goes full Rambo and murders everyone First Blood style. massacre she finds out Jonah's actually alive and Rourke was simply lying to her. She breaks down, soaked in the blood of her rage with the weight of her monstrous vengeance weighing in on her conscience. Jonah calms her and helps Lara decipher the clue to the box's location. The clue leads them to a mission in San Juan where they find a secret catacomb beneath the church that leads to Lopez's tomb. They locate the box inside of the tomb, and Amaru finds them and captures Jonah, forcing Lara to give over the box in exchange for Jonah's life. Amaru reveals that it is he who ordered Lara's father's death to keep him from finding Paititi and revealing it to the world. He takes the box and leaves Lara and Jonah as a cataclysmic earthquake destroys the mission. Meanwhile, back in Paititi, the new king Etsli leads an assault on an underground temple to disrupt Amaru's ceremony. The assault eventually fails, forcing Lara to continue alone. She comes across the Yaxil leader, Chakchel, and convinces the Yaxil to help her stop Amaru. While the Yaxil kill York and the rest of the High Council, Lara makes it to the top of the temple, but it's too late to stop Amaru. He pierces the box and is filled with Kokul Khan's power, effectively making him a god. But that's alright, because Lara's a god killer. She kicks his ass, and as Amara accepts his defeat, transfers the Kukul Khan power over to Lara. Because, you know, it's easy to make a transfer of God's powers from one person to another. It's kind of like transferring your homework from your flash drive to your laptop. It's, it's just that easy, folks. It's just that easy. 
So Lara is totally tempted to revive her parents with her new power, but resists the urge and instead lets Chokchel symbolically stab her as Ixchel, sacrificing Kukul Khan's spirit and stopping the cleansing. The sun doesn't die, Unuratu gets a proper burial, Jonah finally gets a girlfriend, and Lara helps Etsli restore Paititi. After the credits, we see an older Lara plotting her next adventure as her shaking butler offers her some tea. She simply responds, Lovely. 